Entrepreneurship, innovation and collaboration with the private sector are critical for tackling climate change. That's the conviction of TDK Ventures, the venture capital firm putting hundreds of millions into early stage tech startups in the hunt for impactful solutions and what they call challenger technologies to solve the most pressing problems. I sat down here at COP28 in Dubai with their team to talk about partnerships for a better future. So is this your first time at COP? What are you both most excited about? It's our first time and it's amazing to see all the entrepreneurs and technologies in the full spectrum from incumbent to challenger technologies we will talk later about. Absolutely, I'm looking forward to hearing more about that. Yeah, I really enjoy seeing the innovations from all across the world and people coming together to propose new solutions that will help solve the climate change. Sounds absolutely excellent. Should we go and chat about it more in the studio when we Let's can do find it. out more? Let's do it. Nicola, Tina, welcome. So what does TDK Ventures do? What's the mission? So TDK Ventures is a corporate VC firm of the technology company Japanese, TDK. For over 85 years, TDK's mission has been to contribute to a better future, a better world through technologies. From ferret materials and magnetic tapes, today TDK makes full use of the power electronics technology to contribute to energy transformation. At TDK Ventures, we carry that mission forward with $350 million put to work, investing globally in early stage technology startups we deployed very meaningful solutions towards a better energy transition. We believe in a sustainable future where digital energy and environmental transformation can improve billions of lives. And we invest in entrepreneurs innovating across several deep technologies, including the next generation materials, energy, computing, connectivities, mobility, and Industry 4.0. So you ask about the mission of TDK Ventures. Mm -hmm. We articulate it as a code of conduct, C-O-D-E. C is contribution to society. So we invest in entrepreneurs who have positive and meaningful missions to contribute to society. Uh, o is for one team reaching for the sky. So here we work collaboratively with entrepreneurs, but also investors to make sure that as a team, we contribute to a better world. D is delivering deep insights, which means we really spent a lot of time to make sure that we invest in what we call king of the hills. The companies that we believe will become market leader number one in the future, again, to have maximum impact. And E is entrepreneurs first. And this is what we call the ultimate impact scalers because the entrepreneur's mission, their life's journey is to bring maximum impact to the world and scale it. And we want to be part of their journey to make sure that they become as successful as possible. And we, when we invest in startup company, we bring more than just the capital. We help them in various form. For example, we leverage TDK's core competency in electronics components to help the entrepreneur bring the innovation to the actual product and bring the pilot to actual implementation and deployment. And we help them in other forms as well. For example, we might be helping them in terms of coaching, board services, in terms of sharing the deep insight, making introduction and help them with fundraising. And we have a dedicated team, we call it the scaling team. And this is all about helping our portfolio companies through operational expertise. So it could be marketing, human resources, recruitment, non directly financing, legal, and this is all about making sure that their project is as successful as possible, especially when they are early stage startups. They don't have all that expertise available. Mm -hmm. So expanding out now, what do corporate venture capital firms do? And why are they so important in leveraging the fight against climate change? Now more than ever, the world is facing challenges. Today, more than 190 countries around the world have ratified the Paris Climate Agreement to keep the global warming temperature below 1.5 degrees. While those commitments are important, 
is not sufficient. We need new technological solutions. And this is where entrepreneurs come in. They provide solutions to solve those problems, but they do need capital to scale this technology to commercial reality. Yes, exactly. This is where corporate venture capital and venture capital can play a critical contributions towards energy transition. We are all part of an innovation ecosystem. We advocate for major corporations like TDK to contribute to the solution for climate change. They can do that by investing in and expediting the development of new solutions that allows for ener renewable energy. And the difference between corporate ventures capital and financial ventures capital is that thanks to our corporate mothership, we have unfair advantage in helping our portfolio companies. We always add value to all of our portfolio company investment. For example, we could provide the early product validation, help them with piloting, sharing the customers and market channel, providing introductions to the customer as well as market insights. And this is a concept of TDK goodness we have at TDK Ventures, which is all the activities we do to help entrepreneurs be more successful, more quickly, with less risk, we call that TDK goodness. But it's not what we think is valuable, it's what the entrepreneurs validate, tell us, has really moved the needle for them. Only when they tell us that, it becomes a real TDK goodness. And can you tell me about some of the investments TTK Ventures are making to help accelerate climate mitigation? So let me share with you our climate tech investment thesis. In order to solve the climate change problem, we need to first know where CO2 emissions are coming from. So today, about 40 gigaton of CO2 are emitted annually, and three quarters of those are coming from fossil fuel energy use. And there are three major sectors that contribute the most, and those are the industrial sector, the building sector, and the transportation sector. So the main part of our investment thesis is to invest in solutions that allows us to transition from fossil fuels to electrification and low carbon solutions. We have invested today in 15 portfolio companies that just do that. And maybe we'll give you some examples, including Verdage, Faction, Starship, Ascend Elements, PH7, and Autoflight. So let me start with Verdigi, who has developed the water electrolysis technology to make green hydrogen. Today, hydrogen is used in various industrial applications from fertilizers to chemical production and so on. But it is made from natural gas mostly. And every ton produced, you emit 10 tons of CO2 because of that. So it's not sustainable. And Verdigi is trying to change that by using renewable power like wind and solar to split water into green hydrogen. And that's how we make sustainable, low carbon fuel for the future. We also invested in startups that helps with transportation and the electrification of it. We invested, for example, in Autoflight, which is an electrical vertical and tank of landing aircraft. And they have the world record of longest distance with a single charge. Uh, we also invested in uh, last mile delivery with Starship and Faction that have this electrical vehicle that allows for low carbon delivery of goods. Mm -hmm. It does not make sense to use a two tons gasoline vehicle to deliver pizza, but it does make a lot much more sense to use Faction or Starship to do that. In addition to green hydrogen and mobility electrification, we also invest in the infrastructure for energy transition. In order for us to achieve net zero by 2050, the International Energy Agency has forecasted that we're gonna need five times more metal consumption in order to make wind and solar and battery and power transmission lines, so on. So in order to get us to the metals that we would need sustainably, we have invested in companies that do sustainable metal recycling and extraction, such as Ascent Element, who has developed a low-cost, low-carbon technology to recycle lithium-ion batteries at the end of life. And that helped us 
reduce the dependency on mining as well as the import of battery material from overseas. And we also invested in PH7 technologies, which has developed a technology that is closed loop, low carbon, to recover platinum group metal that you need for hydrogen fuel cell and industrial catalyst, and also develop the technology to extract copper from low grade ore. And I would argue that copper is probably the most needed critical metal for the future energy transition because it's such a good electron conductor that you need in virtually all the electrification applications. I will expand further that we also need to invest beyond the incumbent technology like wind, solar, and lithium ion batteries. We also need to look at technologies that may not be economically viable today, but which would be very important in a fragmented world. What I mean is that today we are in this globalized world where we have a fairly free flow of materials, energy, and technologies among regions. But as we see the geopolitical changes and wars happening, we can see a higher barrier to this flow of materials and energy and technology amongst countries. What that means is that some of these technologies, which we call challenger technologies, will start to become more important and will receive more subsidies and funding from the countries that are penalized by this fragmented world. Can you talk a little bit more about these challenger technologies and how they're helping the energy transition? Absolutely. Let me share some of the unmet needs that this challenger technology can support. Right now in the US, we have the highest energy consumption to date and the renewable energy penetration is increasing, which is a good thing. But we actually need to think about the technology being used today. And wind, solar and lithium ion batteries requires materials which are today available but need to be sourced internationally. So TDK Ventures invested in peak energy because it can actually contribute to this very hard requirement of long-term storage that's needed. And this is a 600 gigawatt requirement estimated by 2030. That's a $40 billion market. Another example of challenger technology that we invested in is nuclear fusion. Fusion has the potential to provide limitless power without emitting CO2 or long-term radioactive waste. And the process that power fusion is similar to the sun generating power, and that is by using a strong force, a gravity in this case, to pull together hydrogen atom until it combines and then release an enormous amount of energy. So it has a very high potential to really move the needle, but to make it economically viable is still a challenge for our scientific community and also the engineering community. And this is where corporate ventures and venture capital and the public funding is needed to really accelerate this technology. Today, if we want to make a strong impact on CO2, we have to take the coal-fired power plant off the grid. But it is so hard to do so because wind and solar are intermittent, while coal is very stable base load power. TDK Ventures have invested in type one energy to try to change the course of that and have power delivered to the grid continuously by fusion. And they are leveraging the technology that have been developed over seven decades through the international research facility. And we believe that it is important to invest in the challenger technology like nuclear fusion, because that would be the way that we can really enhance the global energy security, foster the innovation, and perhaps improve the economic prosperity of the community. And in a nutshell, just to wrap up, if TDK Ventures succeeds, what impact do you both think you could have on the environment? As mentioned at the beginning of the interview, our mission, our core mission is to contribute to society. If we are successful, we will see a number of new technologies that we're investing in now that will be deployed at scale. We will see gigatons of greenhouse gas being avoided. We will see many new jobs, high paid jobs in the climate tech industry. 
we will leave the world in a better place than we came in. But I want to be clear, we will not succeed, succeed alone. Climate crisis requires everyone, governments here at COP28, corporations, entrepreneurs, citizens to change the outcome. We believe that we need to work together to make sure that we deliver on this promise of better, more responsible energy transition. We are part of a very powerful corporate ventures community that can leverage their core competency to help combat climate change. And we would like to encourage the world's leaders and the world's largest corporations to join us on this journey to really help make an impact. And we cannot do this alone, like you mentioned. We would need so many technological solutions in our toolbox, and we will need each and every one of us to join this effort. Yeah, together, we will solve the world's most pressing challenge of our lifetime. Tina, Nicola, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.